We've spoken with several experts concerning the effects of this pandemic on our day to day lives right here in the coastal bend, discussing various issues such as unknown carriers of the virus. Who's the most vulnerable and why? Yeah, that's right. For example, we asked our doctor, Dr. Sarani, about how the COVID-19 virus has been spread versus the flu. In this case, what happened is there is no virus. Nobody has an immunity. We have not vaccinated anyone. So what happened is every time a virus comes in contact with you, then they spread to the next person. They keep on coming in. Normally, if it is a flu virus, and let's say if I've been vaccinated, I already have the antibody, the virus comes to me, my body just hits it, stop it right there. It doesn't propagate. So if you don't have any herd immunity where the patients doesn't have or the public doesn't have any immunity, then it can keep on spreading. Now, the doctor goes on to explain about the R naught, uh, which is the R naught factor, which is determined by how many people are infected by one person and then is used as a multiplier to determine the rate of spread. Pretty mm -hmm. fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And another topic of concern to us is insurance. If you are among the majority of residents in the Coastal Bend who are employed full time and have insurance, well, you're fortunate. But what about the 25% who don't and end up needing care during the pandemic? Well, we reached out to Will Heaven with the Levitt Group and asked him. Yes, there's actually two options. Uh, the first is for those whose uh, income, what we would call them low income, uh, but yet don't qualify for Medicaid, they can go to the Nueces County Hospital District and they can get coverage immediately. Uh, based on their family size and income. That's something that they can qualify for. Uh, the second option would be to purchase a health plan on the marketplace, uh, otherwise known as Obamacare, and we can get people covered year round on that program. Now, when it comes to those folks who may come down with an illness or heaven forbid COVID-19 and they have to be quarantined, what rights do they have when it comes to employment? Will they be allowed back to work? Does the employer have the right to terminate? For those questions, we turn to employment attorney Amy Augustine with the Gale Law Group for those answers. So a non-salaried employee who earns an hourly wage and um, who doesn't have some sort of paid time off policy in place because many employers don't have a paid time off policy and they're not required to have one um, in many circumstances. And so unfortunately, uh, issues you know like the coronavirus um, are gonna harm employers as well as employees. And so the employees who earn an hourly wage and are unable to come to work because they're either sick or the employer is closed um, for the safety of everybody, their remedy would be to contact the Texas Workforce Commission and to apply for unemployment benefits. And now that we know that CCISD will keep schools closed until the 23rd comes the question of what about those students who depend on food assistance at school for their breakfast and lunch? Yeah, those kiddos whose only nutrition come from their school provided breakfasts and lunches. We turn to the best expert for that question, B. Hansen, the head of the Coastal Bend Food Bank. Like, for example, for um, spring break, we prepare enough food uh, with the help of the Junior League. Uh, they donated the food, they volunteer preparing the bags, and we gave them enough food to cover the whole week. So if there was any event that the government will close the schools, then we have identified those children that are uh, food insecure, and we will have, we are already have the backpacks prepared. Such an awesome program. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, B. Hansen tells me that the food bank is always grateful for donations. $10 will help provide a box of food for a family. The food bank serves an 11 county area right here in the coastal bend.